What's going on, everybody? It is January 9th, Tuesday. Um, Four-game slate today. Not really awesome. Uh, clear delineation in the games. Uh, last night was all right. Um, could have used uh, no AD injury. I was pretty heavy on him. The fact that he was able to put up 47 fantasy points in like 27 minutes is insane. Um, but I would have liked to see him get those remaining touches for the rest of the game. Would have helped me a little bit. DeRozan bailed me out too. And got lucky there with that OT. Anyway, uh, four games. Let's just start it off. Uh, later start tonight. Um, Raptors heat doesn't tip off till 7.30. So we get an extra half hour before lock, which is always great. Makes it a little bit easier when I'm getting home and trying to eat dinner. Um, so let's take a look at the Raptors. We've got Raptors hosting the Heat, 107.25 implied total, which would be tied for third on the day. I don't know why I just said it like that. Really weird enunciation. I was taking a look at um, cleaning the glasses lineup um, information and taking a look at the impact, we'll get to it in a little bit, but the impact of with Gobert and without Gobert on shooting frequency and the dramatic change in whether or not people even get to the rim is just crazy. They go from basically the best team in the league at stopping shots at the rim to one of the worst. Or to allowing shots at the rim rather okay so Raptors obviously on a back-to-back -back. Um, I do prefer DeMar again to Kyle however you know Kyle's price is falling on DK DeMar is a full twelve hundred dollars more expensive than him um, so it is something to keep in mind there's going to be a boost to Lowry at some point in time soon, you would imagine. Or, he's getting old. Um, I'd be willing to entertain Serge DeLon Wright. Uh, kudos to anybody that had Jonas last night, because he just went ham sandwich. Let's take a look at them. <sighs> DeMar, 9,300 on FanDuel, 8,300 on DK. I mean, I love him on DK a lot. Let's see. He, yeah, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't like him again. You know, the the back to back I don't love, but they're at home tonight. So, I mean, DeRozan's a two for me. Maybe even close to getting stacked up again like I did last night because it's just a, that 8300 is a great price for someone that takes the amount of shots that he does. Uh, Lowry, I, I might not, like, I would want very little exposure to him on FanDuel, I think. 9300 is pretty costly. Uh, what did he finish with last night? 51.6. Fifty-one point six on FanDuel. Okay. Jonas with back-to-back forty-point games in forty-three total minutes. That's damn good. Um. All right, Kyle, seventy-nine hundred on FanDuel, seventy-one hundred on DK. So we're looking to get him to forty. He's had two 40-point games in his last seven. Um, I don't have much problem having Kyle, but I would have a much lower percentage of Kyle than I would of DeMar. I'd say I'd probably go like 2-1 to one DeMar to Kyle. Um, Surge is 5,900. On FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. So we're looking for him to get to 30. Big game last night. I was happy to be on him. Uh, 47 fantasy points. It's been pretty good lately. I don't see any reason not to have um, a decent chunk of surge. How much do I want? So... Um, 
It'd be like James Johnson guarding him. That's not the best. Probably a three for me. That could change. He could be a bigger priority, depending on what the rest of this slate looks like. Uh, Jonas, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. Um, I don't, I, like, I just don't trust that. He's been obviously hyper efficient, but 17 minutes, 18 minutes, 16 minutes, you know, did he play the whole overtime? Let's, I mean, he's he's not playing enough minutes, and you got to hope that he puts up, like, 1.5 fantasy points per possession to make that worth your while. Finally, DeLon Wright, 4,800 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. Uh, not the best play last night. He only had 17 fantasy points. It is one of the perils of using him. You know, not the best scorer in the world. I don't mind having him in um, in lineups, but I don't want a ton of him. Next up, we'll head to Miami. Um, they are in Toronto with a 100.75 implied total. Seventh on the night. Not the best spot. I haven't looked at any of this yet, so I'm anxious to see what has happened with um, Whiteside's salary. <sighs> well, let's fix that now. Hello here, Derek Jones Jr. All good. Um. Dragic looks good. Tyler Johnson looks okay. Maybe Olenek, but I don't necessarily love it. It's going to be interesting. Okay, Whiteside. 7,600 <clears throat> on FanDuel. 7,100 on DK. I've got him projected for 26 minutes. It's okay value on DK. But we would need him to get to like 40 to be happy about what we got. Uh, put up 39 and a half in 26 minutes in his last time out. So I'm hoping he's starting to get his sea legs back. Um, He's lower down the line for me. He's probably a four on FanDuel. I'll put him at a three here for DK. Dragic, 6,500 on FanDuel, 67 on DK, which is a bummer. Um, he also needs, you know, high 30s to 40s. Not the best in the last two, but back-to-back 40-point -back games before that. Not a great matchup. Josh Richardson is 5,600 on FanDuel and 6,200 on DK. Uh, he's probably at two on FanDuel at that price. You need him to get to 28 points for 5x on FanDuel. Four straight games in the 30s. Five out of six. Um... So I would say load up on Josh Richardson if you're going to be going after anybody. I will have a, a muted amount of him because of the sight. Looks like the Heat will be the team where I rotate a guy in, basically. Olenek is 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. He's been playing big minutes lately. <clears throat> we need him to get to... You know, low 30s, which is a 29er, a 29er, two 40-point games in his last six. So I'm fine there. But again, um, hmm, he's probably better than everybody else in this scenario. <coughs> I 
I do worry about him shooting threes against the Raptors. Oh, pickups. I think he's probably a three. And then Tyler Johnson is the last guy I want to look at here. 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. If we can get to 30, you know, he has one 30-point game, a 40-point game, and a 40-point game. The rest of them, not so good. So you're kind of rolling the dice there, but that's perfect for a GPP. So for me, I'll have maybe 10% on each one of those guys from the Heat. And I probably won't stack any of them. And I'll just hope that one of them or two of them hit. I'll look into their uh, correlations, too. If any of those guys have like really good correlations with each other, then I'll make sure that I stick them together and leave the other guys solo. All right. Oklahoma City Thunder hosting the Portland Trailblazers. Thunder 107.25 implied total, which is also... Uh, tied for third. They're the team with the Raptors. Big favorites uh, at home. No Dame Lillard. So, you know, this one might not be close. Um, yeah, this one's going to be... This, this could be an ugly game. Okay. Like Westbrook, um, I don't love George, but I like George. Maybe Steven Adams. Other than that, I'm not wild about anything from a DK perspective. So let's focus on both now. 11-8 for Westbrook. 11-5 on DK. <clears throat> That's a healthy, healthy price tag. But... He should have the ability to do sort of whatever he wants. Um, I like him a lot in this game. But the the blowout potential scares me, so I can't have too much of him. Paul George is 8300 on FanDuel, 7800 on DK. Um, that's a pretty tough price on FanDuel. Need him to get to low to mid 40s. One game in the 40s in his last four. Relatively high floor. Um, so I'm fine that with that as well. I wouldn't roster Steven Adams on FanDuel. I probably wouldn't roster anyone else on FanDuel. Um, you can talk me into... Oh, man. What has Houston done? I don't even know if I'm saying that right. No, I can't do it. Um, so Steven Adams is 6,400 on DK. You need him to get to, like, 38 to be super happy. He's had two games in the 30s in his last three. Almost three. Um, he's been running a little hot. I'm not super nervous of Nurkic. So I'll go Steven Adams as a three as well. Not a lot jumping off the page as of likes, so this is going to be a balanced sort of random -y day. Um, now I'll head to Portland. Uh, Blazers, 98.75 implied total, which is seventh. Nope, eighth. Their last. Dead last on the day. Thought they were flip-flopped. Okay, so Aminu looks good. Uh, Napier looks good-ish. I don't love the the matchup, but the price works. I won't. I don't want any part of CJ. I don't think. Mm, that maybe Evan Turner, but I don't really like that either. 
It's just a bad game. Okay, CJ is 7,500 on both sites. I won't be touching him on DK. <clears throat> he, um... Yeah, I won't be touching him on DK. 37 and a half on FanDuel. 47 in his last time out without Lillard. He's had three of four high 40-point games, so maybe I need to look at this a little bit closer. So I loaded up NBA Wowie. This is just this year, and this is the section we would want to be looking at. So CJ McCollum in 865 minutes without Dame on the floor has increased his uh, DraftKings points per minute by 0.16, which is not insignificant. I mean, that's it's like five points over a game for him. So that isn't anything that I have factored into my projections, but it might be something that I need to add as a tweak. A way to slightly bump up McCollum. Or, not, I mean, not just McCollum, but anybody in general. Um, do I still have this open? I'd like to see what it was if I include last year as well. Not a lot of turnover on this team, so I'm a little bit more comfortable uh, taking one more year's worth of stats. So let's grab that while I have it here. And I have added this. <clears throat> this tab to the file that I have on my website so that people can grab all of this stuff from NBA Wowie and paste it in and, and check it out as well. So this is all of the minutes that Dame plays. CJ scores 0.93 DK points per minute. And this is every minute that Dame is not on the court. It's a big jump for CJ even bigger so CJ goes up 0.18 fantasy points if he plays 34 minutes you know, that's six extra points you can't look at it uh, straight like that but if you say like even three or four that changes the value equation for him um, so maybe it's, that's not, it's not a full fade of CJ. I won't have a lot of him uh, for the simple fact that this is a really tough matchup. Thunder are incredible on D. Portland not expected to score. Um, so I am walking back a little bit of my distrust of McCollum. But I'll only have maybe two, three lineups of him tops. Just because... While I like the price and I like that little boost from Dame not being on the court, when push comes to shove, they're projected to score less than 100 points against one of the better defending teams in the league. So I can't get too crazy about it. Nurkic is 7,500 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK, just for argument's sake. Nurkic goes up 0 .09 with Dame off the court. So, negligible at best. He's only played 211 minutes without him, and 100, or 1,300 minutes with him. So, in my opinion, that doesn't really change Nurkic all that much. Um, so, you need him to get to... Can he get to 40? Against Adams and against this team, you know, he, he can get there. What's Nurkic's history against... The Thunder. So earlier this year, he had a monster game. And in the past, he has been very successful against the Thunder. Well, I was going to say that I wasn't super interested in Nurkic, but... Again, I'm, I'm okay with having a little bit of him. Uh, if any lineup I have with Adams, I won't have Nurkic. Any lineup I have with Nurkic, I won't have Adams, obviously. Now, Napier, 4,800 on FanDuel, uh, 5,400 on DK. And one of the interesting takeaways here, because I think it was a pretty big number. I don't know, it's not as bad as I thought. 
Um, in 877 minutes without Dame, uh, which is most of the time, they rarely play together over the past year and a half. Um, but 0.94 is a very solid uh, fantasy points per minute number. I would expect Napier um, to be a very high value. He's a two for me. I'll have a ton of him, um, as will just about everybody else. If that was a slightly better matchup, you know, he'd be a one, but it's not. <laughs> uh, Aminu, 5,300 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK. Wow, I'm ending up with a lot of Portland guys, which I'm kind of surprised about. But they're all, again, they're all getting rotated. Everybody's getting rotated at this rate. I see very little that I want to stack up. So let's just kind of hope for the best night. Um, but Aminu's got a, a good matchup in that uh, he shoots a ton of corner threes and threes in general. Um, I'm expecting, you know, nine shot attempts and at least half of those to be threes. So you're betting on the hot hand which is sort of what you want to do in a GPP. Um, he's a three for me on FanDuel, but I think he's a straight two for me on DK, as weird as that sounds. Two, two, but, like, it's just his price is down. Like, I think it, like, went down. Yeah. 200 more dollars. Like, it's just every little bit helps, you know? It allows you to fit in other guys. Aminu, absolutely neutral with or without Dame on the court. So, no major boost there. And then Evan Turner, 4,000 on FanDuel, um, 4,300 on DK. Uh, he looks really good on FanDuel at 4,000. Um, and Turner's got a very negligible boost um, with... Lillard off the court. It's more of a, a time aspect for him than it is uh, like change in quality. Uh, I think he's a three for me. Um, I don't. Well, yeah, I don't love this matchup. He's not much of a three point shooter. In fact, the only three that I think I've ever seen Evan Turner make is that bomb that he hit when he was at Ohio State. God, that was. A awesome shot I should have never gave him that space but you know why would you expect him to hit a 35 footer okay anyway <sighs> to the Mavs we go uh, Mavs hosting the magic six and a half point favorites they have a 110 implied total and the Dallas Mavericks have the number one implied total on this slate get excited I guess Cool. Nothing looks terribly good. Um, oh God. All right. The only guy that I'm definitely not going to have a part of is Wesley Matthews. From there, I don't know. I don't like really anything here, which sucks because of that total. Harrison Barnes, 6,800 on FanDuel, 7,000 on DK. Black, black, black. He needs high 30s. He's been in the 30s in his last four. Feels safe. Um, but he's not a good value. Oh, my God. These lineups are going to be so random. I might not even have to tweak it because I don't really have any preferences. It's just going to be like, you know what? Here's everybody. Nobody more than 40, 30% owned and just randomize the shit out of it. Four uniques in each. Hope for the best. Uh, Dennis Smith Jr., 6,100 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. Mavs prices on DK below. Um, he needs mid-30s. He's been really solid right at that 30 mark with a high 40 there. Um, that's actually not bad. You know, he's not going to be going against 
particularly amazing point guard defense. I might actually have a little bit more Dennis Smith than I thought I would. Uh, Berea, 6,200 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. Man, my player pool is going to be gigantic. Um, I probably wouldn't have any Berea on FanDuel. On DK, I mean, he's a he's not high up for me. Very low. Maybe one lineup. Um... Eh, maybe two. I don't know. Not a lot. Wes Matthews, I don't want at all. Dirk, 5,300 and 5,000 on DK. Um, that's not the worst price in the world. Dirk and Aaron Gordon might be like the opposites athletically. Can Dirk get the 30? Yeah. Again, I don't want much Dirk. Um, Dwight Powell, is he gonna? Can I trust the minutes? No. Minutes are all over the place. I'd be okay with a flyer lineup on Dwight Powell as well. He's uh, forty-four hundred on Fanduel and. 3,800 on DK. So I'd be willing to entertain a flyer on him on DK. To Orlando we go now. Orlando, 103.5 implied total, which is fifth. I don't think there's going to be anything interesting here. I'm hoping one of their prices is just weird and somebody decent pops, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Okay, um, don't love Gordon, but he's got a really good statistical matchup. Peyton looks the best, although he's hurt the worst. Man, they really limit people from getting to the rim. That's crazy. Without Nerland's Noel, too, which is not something you would have expected. <laughs> Peyton and Simmons are probably the priorities, and we'll see how the other two look. Aaron Gordon is 8,300 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. Man, that's a terrible price. Ugh. That almost hurts my feelings. I mean, you're looking for him to get mid to high 40s. He's done it twice in his last five since he's been back. I mean... I have a hard time getting there. Now, admittedly, I think that I am underrating him slightly. Uh, he's made a pretty big leap in talent this year compared to the past. So, I might be a point or two behind him. He grades out pretty poorly. But knowing, even knowing that, that price is tough. He won't pop on my optimizer at all. I'll have to force him into three or four lineups. Well, for Peyton, on the other hand, has an okay price on DK. He's 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. You need him to get to 40. Um, Done that in the last six. A couple other games in the 60s, or in the in the mid to high 30s. Um, so he's a little bit lower. Man, my, my short list is not short. For a four-game slate, it's going to be a long list of meh. Everybody looks okay. Fournier. Um, I don't really want any part of never Google here. I don't like the price. Yeah, I'm going to pass on Fournier. I don't want Biombo. He's too expensive now. Um, Jonathan Simmons, though. 5,700 on FanDuel. 5,200 on DK. If you can be confident that he plays tonight, um, I think that he's in an okay spot. So you just got to keep an eye on it. 
If he's confirmed playing, I wouldn't have any problem moving forward. Last game on the slate. Los Angeles Lakers hosting the Sacramento Kings. 109 implied total for the Lake Show. Second on the night. Hate having decent fantasy options so late in the night. I'm pretty sure this is going to love Lonzo. You know, so we like Lonzo and Randall, and that might be it, actually. I think they had a price change. Lonzo, 7800 on FanDuel, 7300 on DK. That is not the best price for Lonzo on uh, FanDuel, but against the Kings, ooh, Ooh, didn't think about the De'Aaron Fox matchup. I think Ball is shook by Fox. I'm going to have a small amount of Lonzo. I'm going to have a small amount of everybody, so. I'm not disregarding him, I guess, is the only real takeaway for this. I wouldn't play him on FanDuel, though. You need him to... He needs to hit 39 just to hit 5x. I... I think Lonzo is DK only for me. And even that is a tough one. Brandon Ingram, I think, is too expensive. Kyle Kuzma, 5,700 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. I know that he hasn't been playing very well. But a 5,700 price, 5, price tag on FanDuel, he's probably a 2 for me at that price. Um, here he's a 3. Only other guy I want to look at is Randall. He's DK only. It's up 7,100. Coolius Randall. He's 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. Um, I like him a lot. He's actually probably a two. Surprise, surprise. I like Julius Randall. Um, Larry Nance. Does he ever pop? He had 29 in the last one. I had the 33-point game. Might be a decent value option. He's 4,400 and 4,300. I don't really see anything else that I'm interested in. So let's head to Sacktown now. Um, Kings 102.5 implied total. Sixth on the night. Uh, for right now, I'm assuming George Hill plays. Uh, there's sort of a little bit of mystery as to why he hasn't been playing. I don't know. Hoi, boy. Uh, I mean, you would think Willie Collie Stein would be in for a decent night. Other than that, unless you... I mean, if you want to get in on De'Aaron Fox narrative, that's one thing. Okay, Willie Collie Stein... 7,500 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. Can't take him on FanDuel. He's a DK only for me. Willie Cauley Steiner, brother of uh, Rick and Scott. No, nope, he doesn't belong there either. Um, you know, like he's a three for me, I guess. Zebo, 5,500 on FanDuel, I think is feasible. Uh, he's 6,300 on DK. So I wouldn't take him on DK. Now, De'Aaron Fox, 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. They're on a back-to-back. -back. Um, you need him to get to 30. I think he's been good lately. Yeah, two straight games of 26, one 30-point game. I don't think that he can blow up. But I can't disregard him totally because he's playing Lonzo, as weird as that sounds. So I'll sprinkle him in. And then Bogdan, I think, might be the only guy that I'm truly interested in on this entire team. He's 4,600 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. So you need him to get to like 25 plus. Um, has that ability and can just shoot the lights out. 
shoots 40% of his shots from threes, which isn't something the Lakers worry about too much. He's actually a two for me. I'll have a lot of him. Not the best game in the world, so. George Hill, um, you know, if I know that he's going to play, I'm fine with having a little bit of exposure to him. Same sort of thing goes for Buddy Heald, although to a much lesser extent. And that's pretty much just because of the amount of threes they shoot. Alright, I think that's it. I don't even want to see this. This is just going to be ugly. So many names. So I, I showed this off in the... Uh, showed it off like it's that interesting. In the live stream last night. I guess I'll show it again here. So I wanted to give people a perspective of how much just a minute on their projections changes things or just slight changes in their projection quality. So someone like uh, Jonathan Simmons would be a really good example, I think. So I have Simmons projected for 32 minutes and 25.9 points. 5,200 salary on DK is 0.81. So 0.81 is here in the center of this table. And I have him projected for 32 minutes. So right there is the intersection of the two things that I have him set at, which is 5x on the dot on DK. But if he just plays two less minutes, he's at 4.7. Two more minutes, he's at 5.3. Um, this is just 5% decrease in my projection, 5% increase in my projection. So just a slight bump. You know, if he gets to 0.89 instead of 0.81 and he plays an extra minute, that's 5.7x instead of 5. There's so much variability in this that... Honestly, when people give projections, I think it would be much more realistic to say, I've got Jonathan Simmons, and you know I could do this a little bit better with standard deviations and stuff, but this will prove, or this will do you know, most of the way of what I'm trying to say. You know, I've got Jonathan Simmons anywhere between 20 and 33, um, in anywhere between you know, 29 and 35 minutes. Because... The difference between playing three less minutes and slightly worse and three more minutes and slightly better is the difference between 6.3x and 3.9x. It's dramatic at the margins. So what you're trying to do is really just maximize that. But know that you don't just want to use one number. If I've got 32 minutes and 0.81 points per project or points per possession or points per minute, like there's so much variability on that. Don't be afraid to tweak this stuff. This is just raw data. You want to move it around as you see fit. If you think this matchup is a little bit better, or like in CJ's case, you know, uh, a little bit of bump because Dame is out. You know, feel free to bump that up a point. Bump it up two points. See where that moves everybody. I think that it, it's something that people should pay attention to a little bit more. Just very little bumps in minutes in either direction or talent in either direction. Cascade effect. So there's the short list, which is not short. Nobody really stands out for me. They're all value guys that do. It's Dennis Smith, Napier, Bogdan, Aminu. Oh my god, Julius Randle on DK. I have no idea what this is going to look like when I throw it in the optimizer. <laughs> it might be comically ridiculous. How many guys is this? 35 man player pool on a four game slate when the player pool is basically like 45 guys deep already. All right, projections are in. That a little bit of randomness. And let's just make sure that centers don't play with each other. What do we got? A lot of Napier, as we would expect. DeRozan, which makes me very happy because he so rarely pops in my projections. Um, so that makes me happy. That's two guys on my shortlist. 
so far as my top two. Napier and DeRozan. This is DK, obviously. Next up, Olenek and Tyler Johnson are both threes, I would imagine, for me. Where's Tyler Johnson? There's Tyler Johnson, there's Olenek. So I don't necessarily hate that. Aminu, we know, is a two, so that's another guy up there. Russ is a three and could very realistically be a two, but that salary just scares me. So I don't mind having a lot of Russ. And then Nurkic at 50%. I'm okay with that. Berea at 45. He's probably the first guy. Yeah, he's the first guy in the fours to be up there. So that's fine with me. That's a decent chunk of Randall. Um, who are we missing? Dennis Smith Jr. is a little light. I'd like to bump that up a little bit. Where's Bogdan? I'd like to bump Bogdan up a little bit. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. It's at least focusing on the guys that that hit my eye to start. So I can't be too upset there. Now, we'll see how that all shakes out when it comes to game time. Now let's grab this for FanDuel. Or let's not, I guess. There we go. Bump that up. And boom. Ooh. Apparently, I've added things to that table. Ungroup, group. Good. Okay. So let's look at it position by position. Point guard is 90% Napier, 90% Russ. Um, that makes total sense to me. Because of the roster constraints, having Russ on FanDuel is basically a no-brainer. So I'm completely okay with that. I would probably want... I would probably hope for a little bit more Dennis Smith Jr., but that looks completely reasonable to me. And that'll be by far the chalkiest combination. Um, shooting guard. So I had Damar and Bogdan. Bogdan is in half of them, Damar in most. I wouldn't have anywhere near that amount of Ellington. I would have way, way less. I don't like that matchup at all for him. Uh, small forward, I hope, is just a crapshoot. Now, they went heavy on Richardson, heavy on Barnes. Um, they're both threes for me, so I would I would probably nerf both of those guys and spread most of that around. So, like, I would cut Richardson in half to give that to Simmons if he's playing. Um, but I do think that it's interesting. Not that it matters, but... I do have the five guys there that are in that block. Then at power forward, um, no Aminu, which is interesting. Don't love the total, or don't love the, the price there on FanDuel. So that, that makes sense. He's, he shouldn't really be there. Um... Let's see. 70% on Linux is, makes sense to me. A lot of Kuzma, which again makes sense to me on FanDuel. A lot of Zebo, which makes sense. So I would w just want a little bit of Aminu in there, but other than that, I'm fine. And then this is just basically a split between Nurkic and Whiteside, uh, which I get. Um, Randall's out of play on FanDuel. I would have liked to see a Steven Adams lineup there, particularly with Adams being the same price as Randall. Um, but that's the split. The center game just doesn't look very good tonight. You know, it could be that Willie Cauley Stein goes nuts, but at that price, it's tough to uh, justify. So that's it, guys. Four game slate. I am done. I took way longer on this than I should have. Uh, we'll be back for a live show before lock, 6.30 tonight. Um, we get that extra time because of the later lock, but 
you know, like, subscribe, check out Twitter, Patreon, PayPal, whatever you need to do. Projections are at the website. Best of luck tonight.